Hi, Ian Roberts, and welcome back to our Laboratory of the Painting process. Some weeks ago, I mentioned that you could send in images, and I might use them in the videos. And a number of people did, and I'm going to use two images, uh, and I hope they don't mind, because I'm going to adjust them, because I think they fit really well with what we've been talking about the last two weeks about edges that we may think in terms of a structure before we begin. We may cloak that structure in color shapes, and that structure will be apparent because of the quality of our edges. And I think you'll see that by adjusting this painting, we're going to be changing what happens about how the eye is actually moving on the picture plane instead of perhaps what the painter thought the eye was doing on the picture plane. And so then we're going to look at a black and white photograph, one by Edward Stryken of George Bernard Shaw, taken 1912, I think. And you may ask, well, as painters, why are we looking at a black and white photograph? But I think after we've looked at it, you'll see why it was useful. So I hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you at the end. Bye for now. So this is the first image, and the thing I want you to look at are the darks in here. Because those darks are shadows, of course, but they're also creating edges. Edges that are dragging our attention into this area and not letting us go back, presumably, into the distance where we want to get that sense of depth in the picture plane. So this is what I did to it. And the viewer said, uh, the viewer sent me the image, I've got thick skin, hack away. So I have released the edges on all these places, right, by bringing values that are closer to what's around it. So we we're still moving back into space. And then by adding contrast back here, there's the pinks here, the purples here, these are darker, the color of the roof, all those things are bringing the eye back here like that. Both these images have pretty wide rectangular shapes, and so you can certainly make that work. But my own preference, generally speaking, is something with a rectangle more like this, and where the overlaps of the shapes moving back into space kind of gives us a denser moving into space than when it's laid out more sort of almost like a linear way left to right like that. So this is the second image. I want you just to look at it without anything in particular. Just let your eye be easy. This is the way you sort of look at your paintings when you're wanting to see where your eye is going on the picture plane. And you can see you're getting pulled down to this corner and you're getting pulled there because of those reds. I'm not sure if that's underpainting or whether it's actually put in there, but we're getting pulled this way as opposed to this way into the depth of the landscape. So now I've adjusted the images and I've gotten rid of most of the red here and this big line that was pulling us out. And now, if you just have your eye easy, you realize you're not pulled here in the same way. Your eye was, is somewhat released to go back into the painting. So one thing that I find that happens a lot is if you think of this as a grayscale, most students, they're, they're fine coming to about here, maybe even to here. And then there's kind of this default, like, oh, I'm in shadow and I need to go dark. And we saw that in those two images where the lights were seemed okay, and there's a range of values and hues and intensities in the lights. And then the darks just tend to kind of default into here. Whereas, in fact, this happens very seldom in nature. This is more like the kind of light and dark that we're likely to find in nature. And then underneath, at the very bottom of a bush, there might be something like this just to say there's no light getting in there at all. This is a photograph by Edward Stryken of George Bernard Shaw. And right here is where he wants us to look. Now, 
in many respects, that's what we're going to look anyway, because it's lightest and it's his eyes, and that's where our attention is drawn. But look at what he's done to orchestrate the composition. That line coming right into there, and this line coming up to square it right through his nose to bring us right to here. And this long line up his back bringing us right to here. Now, he didn't have Photoshop. So he might have adjusted something here, maybe he softened the edge there compared to here in order to bring us up into the paint, into the photo. But the point is, when he clicked the shutters, the shutter, he had figured this out in advance and he'd very carefully orchestrated that that's the way it would work. And my point about this is a photographer has to do that before he takes the photograph. And particularly in 1912 when you don't have Photoshop. And my point is this is what you have to do when you paint. You have to structure the armature and the idea before you begin. And next week we're going to talk about thumbnails, and I'm sort of going to not use the word thumbnails, but the idea of a roadmap of where we're going and knowing when we get there and when to stop. So I hope you found that gave you some insights again into the use and quality of edges in painting. Um, just today I got an email from a viewer who was basically saying she's incredibly frustrated. She's enjoying the videos because she needs insight because she's feeling frustrated. She often is looking at her painting with no idea what's wrong with it and therefore has no idea how to fix it, which, you know, is difficult. And so next week, I want to introduce something that I think, if that's your situation, you'll find really helpful. So until next week, I hope you have a terrifically creative week, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.